Really? Now? All right. Hello, my YouTube friends. There are a lot of reasons why you may want to record your screen in OBS with audio. You may be doing a reaction video or possibly recording some game footage. You could also just be doing some comedy or social commentary on something you found on the internet. All of these things are really easy to accomplish in OBS. I'm going to show you how to do it today so you know what. Let's get to it! The first thing I need to do is show you exactly how to set up OBS for recording. So let's jump right in. In OBS, we're starting with a completely blank profile. You can see we just have scene down here. You shouldn't have anything in your audio mixer. If you do, go into settings, go into audio, and make sure all of these devices are disabled. Reason why is because we're going to add our audio in there specifically. We want to know exactly what's going in. We don't want OBS to tell us what should be in our audio sources. So before we set up any sources or scenes or anything like that, we're going to go ahead and get our recording settings proper. So we're going to go into settings. And the first thing we're going to do is go into our output right here. And if you are not in advanced, if you might happen to be in simple, you just want to drop this down or change it over to advanced. Click the recording button. Type can stay standard and just select your recording path where you want your files to be saved and now we have our recording format now you can see right here I have mpeg4 or mp4 selected and right down here it will tell you this could be a problem if you have stability issues with OBS where it locks up or whatever and you're recording in mp4 or the MOV format well that file is probably not going to be usable now I never have those problems so I've been recording in MP4 just because it's really easy to use forever. However, if you do get lockups and that sort of stuff and you want to protect yourself from that, you can just select MKV. And then when you finish a recording, you can just go up to File and Remux Recordings and it will remux into MP4 or whatever you want. It's just an extra step that I don't need because mine has always been stable. Now, if you have a built-in encoder in your video card, you're going to want to select that here. Your audio track stuff is going to be dependent upon whether you're going to do any separate audio tracking or anything like that and I can show you how to do that in a minute we don't want to rescale our output we want to get what we get and so basically we can move down here now here your bit rate is going to be controlled by the actual resolution that you're going to be recording it so if we go over here into video you can see that right now we're set to 1920 by 1080 60,000 kilobits per second is probably a little bit overkill for 1920 by 1080 but of course i record in 4k and you can see when i drop this down 4k isn't here so i've got to put that in there boom and we're going to put the same thing here and our frames per second if you're recording something that's fast paced moves a lot 60 is great personally i don't i actually record in 24 frames per second because i want it to look as cinematic as possible it's up to you you decide what your frame rate is but once we do that and we apply and we can go over here into our output and finish this up now you can see my screen just got super mega big so if we click ok we go out here and we hold down our space bar we can use our scroll wheel to zoom in and out to bring this to the regular size. So now we're going to go into settings and output again. And we're going to go into recording. Now I like to use the constant bit rate. It is going to give you larger file sizes. And if you can handle that, that's fine. If not, you can use CPQ or VBR. VBR is a variable bit rate. It will go up and down depending upon the activity that's going on the screen. I'm not really sure how CPQ works but there are different levels of it that you select right here 20 is kind of the standard from what i understand the rate control for cpq is actually works quite well i've just never used it because i'm stuck with cbr it's what i've always used now i can keep slow good quality and high quality and all that stuff down here because i have a fairly good computer which does have a video encoder however if you do not have a standalone video encoder and you're just using x264 you might have to be a little bit more selective down here now i'd still do a 60,000 kilobit per second and you're going to want to do that to see if your machine can handle it very fast is generally speaking the standard and then you know either any one of this stuff 
it doesn't really matter to be honest. You're not going to notice that much of a difference. So I would have mine set up probably like this. And the thing is, is you might have to adjust your bit rate up or down depending upon how powerful your machine is because X264 uses 100% your CPU to encode. So depending upon what you're trying to record, like if you're trying to record video game or something like that on a machine that already doesn't have a graphics card, which is why you're using X264, you could struggle with recording to be honest. And you could notice all kinds of sync problems where your voice is not lined up with your video and things like that. For recording in OBS, you can definitely get away with doing it on X264, but you might need to be a little bit more selective about what you're actually recording. And that's everything that we need to do in order to set up to record our screen. So we can click apply, click OK, and now we can set up our recording. Now I'm gonna show you how you can set up your scenes and add all of the sources and audio that you need to do whatever you're looking to do. Now the obvious reason to be recording in OBS is to capture screens of some sort, and usually that's for a reaction video or a tutorial or some sort of a gaming video that you're recording the game scene. So what I'm gonna show you today is going to enable you to do all that and capture the audio for anything that you might be recording. Now to do recording, you really don't need any more than just one scene. This isn't a live stream. We're not changing scenes. We're just specifically trying to record the video and audio for this one scene. So what kind of sources are we gonna need? Really depends on what you're going to be recording. Obviously, if you're recording games, you're gonna need a game source. And more likely than not, you're going to need a camera source no matter what you're recording. So the first strategy for capturing different things like games or browser sources, so let's say you're going to be doing some sort of reaction video that's gonna use Twitter posts or YouTube videos. Well, there's a couple of different ways that you can do either of those and uh, that will even capture games. So the first one would be a display capture. And if we click on there, we can name what we're capturing. But in this case, we're just capturing another display. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And then you just drop this down and you select which display you wanna capture and whether you want to capture your cursor. You can see if I move my cursor up here, it captures it. If we have that selected, we can click OK. And obviously it's not a 4K monitor, so we've got to embiggen it a little bit here. So now we've got our monitor captured, and no matter what we put on this monitor, it's going to be able to record it. So if we take this Google window, we could go ahead and put it up there, and anything that's on this screen, we can record. Just click Start Recording, now you can see. There is no audio right now. We're just capturing that display. So it really depends on what we wanted to capture. Let's say we were going to capture a YouTube video. Now before we actually play any videos or anything, gotta get our audio squared away. So let's go back into settings and we're gonna go into our audio. Right here, we wanna make sure that whatever this is that is listening to the audio is not your speakers. You can't play audio through your speakers and have a microphone on at the same time. You're just going to get basically echoes. So we wanna have headphones selected here but we also want to go down here and select those same headphones as the audio that the computer is producing. So there we go. So now when we play the video here, it's going to play through our headphones and we'll be able to hear it. But you can see that we don't have any actual audio in our audio mixer right here. How do we add that? There's a couple of different strategies for this. What we're going to do is click the plus and I'll show them to you. Uh, the first thing we can use is audio output capture. This is basically capturing anything that will be played over your selected audio, which in this case is our headphones. So if your computer makes a beep or a bong or whatever, it's gonna get that as well, but it will pretty much get everything. And you just select where your audio is being played. So in this case, it would be in our headphones right there. So now if we do that and we click play, you can see we're receiving the audio from the video. Now we can maximize this as well. So there we go, it fills up the entire screen, whatever we want. But now we've got audio for whatever our desktop is playing. Now maybe we wanna be a little bit more selective about our audio. So we can go ahead and remove this and we can click the plus button and we can go to application audio capture. And in this case, we can put in YouTube to remind us of exactly what we're actually recording and click okay. Now we can drop this down 
and select our Chrome browser right here. So it will just get audio from that Chrome browser. And now when we click play, we're still getting the audio, but we're not gonna get any noises, beeps and bongs that the computer makes or anything like that. Now this is recording another monitor, but let's say that you're on a laptop or something and you only have one monitor. How are you gonna be able to get this? Well, it, there actually is a way to do that. If we go into settings, we can choose hide OBS windows from screen capture. And if I select that, we'll be able to see OBS. The screen will pick up whatever is behind OBS. So there you go. So there's even a workaround if you only have one monitor. But let's say we didn't want to use display capture. Well, that's all right. There are lots of different options here. We're going to go ahead and remove display capture. Now we're going to show you what window capture looks like. We're just capturing a specific window on the computer. So in this case, let's go ahead and put in browser since we're just capturing our browser here. And all you have to do is basically drop this down and select from one of the open windows. So we're going to go ahead and select that. We can capture the cursor once again and we're all set. We'll just click OK. Now we are capturing the physical window. So now you can see before we had the windows bar and everything down here. Now we don't. Now it's only the window that's being captured. So if we maximize this, you could see that basically it gives us the same effect. And because of the way that we set up the audio where it's just capturing our browser source, when we play it, we're still going to get that audio. So you can use this strategy to capture games or anything else. Now, if games are all that you're going to be recording, there is one more piece. So let's go ahead and remove this. And I'm going to click the plus and we're going to select game capture. Now, game capture is probably the best way to pick up your games. And really the settings that you see here are the settings that you should use. It will capture any full screen application. When most of your games are opening, they're going to open in full screen. OBS is going to detect that and automatically start to broadcast it right here. So it's just that simple. You can see we've got nothing here because I don't have any games. If we go ahead and start a game up, as soon as that game pops in, we're going to be able to see it. So now you'll notice that we don't have any audio. Well, it's pretty simple to fix this problem. We can just right click on our audio. And since we used audio input capture, we can just drop this down. And of course, we can select the window that we want. In this case, Hogwarts Legacy. Click OK. Now we're getting our audio. So we're all set. Now we've got game capture up and functioning if that's what you want to capture as well. So let's just go back to display capture here. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to click the plus and we're going to go to display capture. We're going to capture our YouTube video again and we're going to go ahead and change our audio. So now we know how to capture any sort of video or browser or anything like that. The three different ways that you can capture that stuff and also how you can capture your audio. The last thing that you would want to add is possibly a camera. So we just click the plus and we go to video capture device and we can just call this cam and select OK. And now all we have to do is select the camera that we want to add. And I like to select use custom audio device. And then we could go down here and select what microphone we want to use. I'm going to use the cam link audio one and click OK. And we can resize this to whatever we want. Now we've got as you could see, cam audio, if I play our video in the background, you could see that we've got audio coming in from that as well over here. Normally, I'd have to wear some headphones in order to hear that audio to make comments on it, but it's really just that simple. Now, we could take our camera and move it any way we want. We can also crop up our background in different ways. So. This is what it would normally look like. Maybe we just want a smaller screen. So we can hold down our Alt key here and we can crop this up like this so that we get the smaller screen and we can have an overlay in the background or something like that if we want. And then we could just move this over here like that, have us here like this. And all you have to do really is, you know, the green lines mean that it's cropped. If we wanted to add something else to the background, we can click the plus go with a color source or an image or something like that that we want to add to the background. I'm just going to go with a color source. We're going to select the color and let's go with uh, this golden brown here. I like that. Click OK and OK and we'll stretch this over 
and we'll just move it to the bottom and there we go so now we've got basically a video that we can talk about and make comments on and whatever we want to do now the last piece that you need to know is potentially recording different audio so maybe I don't know how much louder or softer my voice is than the actual video that we're picking up but we can have a strategy for that as well so we can go in here and go to advanced audio properties and we can set our camera so that it is playing on track one and we can set our video so that it is playing on track two right then we can go into our settings and go into our output and then if we go into recording we can select which audio tracks we want to record so in this case we want to record audio track one and two and we can even go in and name those audio tracks if we want but we're not going to bother to do that what we're going to do is go ahead and click apply and then OK. And so if I were to make a recording of this, I could just start recording, right? And we see a recording down here in the bottom and it's recording a separate audio track for me and for the video so that I can adjust the levels in post later on when I'm editing the video. So if parts of the video are too loud that we're watching up here, I can turn those down while I'm talking. We'll go ahead and click stop recording. And then if we go into our location where we're recording, you can see this is the format that we get. You know, you've got your year and your date and your month and all that stuff and then the time right here. And so if we drag the video that we just recorded over here and then we drag that video onto our timeline, here's what you're gonna see. We've got one track that's recording my audio and one track that's recording the video audio really awesome not very hard i know anyone can do this but if i did miss something let me know about it down in the comments and if you want to see a video that's specifically tailored towards doing any sort of reaction video check this one out right here and if you're always looking for tools tips and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or youtuber subscribe to the channel my name is michael fire jr thank you so much for watching have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.